This is a video guide to installing the pumps and manifolds for your underfloor water systems. This video is not designed to replace your installation manual and you should ensure you have read it thoroughly before installation. There are three basic configurations for the pumps and manifolds. The standard room kit, which is suitable for single rooms up to 30 meters square, with the heating pipe set at 250 millimeter centers and uses the single circuit constant supply temperature unit. For single rooms requiring more than 30 meters square of heating, with pipes set at 250 millimeter centers, you will need the manifold pump mixing valve unit combined with the manifold unit to distribute the heating across multiple heating loops. In room areas with high heat loss, such as conservatories, you will need to use our conservatory kits, which use the same pumps and manifolds, but because the pipes are set at 200 mm centers, the standard kit, which uses the single circuit constant supply temperature unit, will only service floor areas up to 24 meters square. Areas of high heat loss over 24 meters square will need to use the manifold pump mixing valve unit combined with the manifold unit to distribute the heating across multiple heating loops. For the heating of multiple rooms, you will need our multiple room kits which contain the manifold pump, mixing valve unit combined with the manifold unit and actuators with wiring center to control the different temperatures on each of the heating loops. If you are unsure which system is right for you, contact our Technical Support Centre on 01268 567 019. Choose a suitable site for your pump or manifold. It should be easily accessible for future maintenance if required. Install the pump or manifold approximately 600 mm above the floor and check it is level. The standard room kit contains everything you need to heat a room with a floor area of up to and including 30 meters square. The pump will need to be installed at a location which will provide easy access for future servicing. Place the pump on the wall and use a pencil to mark where you will drill for fixings. Drill holes using an 8 mm bit and then insert wall plugs. Then secure the pump unit to the wall with the supplied screws. Before connecting the pump to the heating flow and return, it is vital that the heating system is filled with water and all air has been purged from the underfloor heating pipe. Also ensure the pipes have been cut to the correct length and have been re-rounded using the re-rounding tool. Fit the two half male iron to 16 mm PEX fittings to the pump one on the central position below the pump and one on the left-hand side. The thread on the fittings must have PTFE tape placed around the threads. When filling the system, it is not adequate to fill the system using the boiler filling loop. On a standard room system, use a garden hose connected to the cold water supply. This is achieved by fitting a 15mm copper pipe into the flow and return pipes on the pump, indicated by the red and blue valves on the pump. Fit a 15mm compression to 3 quarters of an inch male iron fitting to the 15mm pipe on the red valve side and tighten the fitting. On the left hand side, fit a plastic hose over the copper pipe and run the hose into a drain or large bucket. Tighten the two 15mm compression fittings that are on the pump. Fit a hose lock or similar fitting to the 3 quarter inch male iron and connect to your mains water supply. Ensure both the red and blue valves are open, then turn on the mains water supply. Once the water going into the drain or bucket is running free of air, close the blue valve, then close the red valve and turn off the mains water supply. Remove the hose lock fitting from the 3 quarter inch male iron and fit the Rothenberger pressure tester to the 3 quarter inch male iron fitting. Open the red valve and pressurise the system to 6 bar. It is important to check the pressure as a screed floor will generate heat and the pressure will rise. Release the pressure to ensure it remains at 6 bar. Do not allow it to go above 8 bar. Leave the system under pressure whilst any screed or floor covering is laid. Please see the relevant video for the type of floor. 
The pump and any thermostats must be connected by a qualified electrician in line with current building regulations. If you're in any doubt, contact our Technical Support Centre for advice on 01268 567 019. For rooms with a floor area greater than 30 metres square, you will need one of our heating kits which contains a pump and manifold for feeding the heated water through multiple loops. The manifold and pump need to be installed at a location which will provide easy access for future servicing. Place the manifold on the wall and use a pencil to mark where you will drill for fixings. Drill holes using an 8mm bit and then insert wall plugs. Then secure the manifold to the wall with the supplied screws. The pump will need to be attached to the manifold via two ball valves. Attach the ball valves to the manifold ensuring that the red, the warm water or flow, is attached to the top manifold and the blue ball valve or outlet is attached to the bottom. Ensure you attach the ball valve loose nut end to the manifold. Do not forget to fit the washers supplied with the unit. Repeat the process for the blue cold return ball valve. The pump is then mounted into the ball valves using the loose nut connectors. Fit the filling and draining valves to the right hand side of the manifold. Then connect the supply pipework from your boiler to the mixing valve using 3 quarter male iron compression fittings. Don't forget to use PTFE tape on these threads. Do not apply heat to mixing valve. The hot water supply is attached to the rear outlet and is labelled with an H. The cold water return pipe is attached to the front outlet and is labelled with a C. You will now have a completed manifold. Starting with the flow end of the pipes, place the securing nut over the end of the pipe, followed by the olive. Then slide in the pipe insert. Move this entire assembly up into the feed outlet on the manifold. Initially just hand tighten and then secure in place using an open end spanner. Be sure not to over tighten. Repeat this step for each of the feed outlets on the manifold. Then repeat for each of the return outlets. Make sure the feed of each loop corresponds with the return of the same loop before connecting to the manifold. It is vital that the heating system is filled with water and all air has been purged to ensure correct operation. It is not adequate to fill the system using the boiler filling loop. Connect a hose from a mains pressure cold water supply to the hose connection on the top flow manifold and another hose from the hose connection on the bottom return manifold to a drain. Ensure that all the black caps on the bottom return manifold are screwed down, closing the valves. Ensure that the main flow and return ball valves are closed. Then turn on the water supply for the hose and open the hose connection valve on the top flow manifold. At this stage the water is not flowing through the system because all the valves through the system are currently closed. Begin by opening the first circuit valve by unscrewing the black cap, allowing water to flow into the pipe. Then open the hose connection valve on the bottom, return manifold, allowing water to flow freely through the system's first loop. Let the water continue to run through the loop until the water flowing into the drain is clear with no air bubbles. With the water still running, close the first black cap circuit valve and then open the second. Allow the water to flow through the system until the water flowing into the drain is free from air bubbles. Repeat this process for each of the remaining circuit valves. Once all circuit valves have been purged of air bubbles and before closing the final circuit valve, close the hose connection valve on the bottom return manifold. Then close the remaining circuit valves. With the water supply still running, check your system for any leakage. Then close the hose connection valve on the top flow manifold and remove the garden hose. Before continuing, the system must be pressure tested using a Rothenberg pressure tester or similar to a maximum pressure of 6 bar. Before attaching the pressure tester to the hose connection valve, check the isolation valves leading to the pump and onto your boiler are closed. 
Pressure testing must be done with the isolation valves on the pump and manifold closed to avoid damaging the boiler. Once the pressure tester is attached, open the hose connection valve and pressurise the system, checking it has a maximum pressure of 6 bar. The pressure should remain constant for 2 hours. If you are screeding the floor, the screed will generate heat and the pressure will rise. Release the pressure to ensure it remains at 6 bar. Do not allow it to go above 8 bar. It is important to purge the pipework from the boiler to the manifold to avoid air being introduced into the underfloor heating system. The system is balanced by running the pump and adjusting the flow to each zone by turning the square spigots under the black caps on the bottom manifold. The flow in the respective sight glasses should be set at a figure calculated by dividing the length of pipe for that zone by 40. For example, if circuit 1 has a pipe length of 85 metres, then divide this by 40, which is approximately 2 on the scale. Initially, start the system with the thermostatic valve set at a minimum of 35 degrees Celsius. Increase the setting by 5 degrees Celsius per day, up to a maximum of 50 degrees Celsius for concrete floors, or a maximum of 65 degrees Celsius for timber floors. The pump and any thermostats must be connected by a qualified electrician in accordance with the relevant building regulations. For installation of our conservatory kits using pipe spacing of 200 mm, follow the same pump and manifold installation instructions as per the standard room kits. The process is exactly the same, but the maximum heating area for a single loop is only 24 m square. Multi-room systems are similar in approach to the standard room systems for heating areas over 30 meters square, but they also require the installation of electrical controlled actuators via a wiring centre. The wiring centre controls the actuators to automatically open and close the actuators on the manifold. This enables you to control the heat output based on each room's temperature when fitted with separate thermostats. The actuators are fitted to the system after it has been filled with water, as the valves need to be operated by hand initially. Install the wiring centre adjacent to or slightly above the manifold, within easy reach for connecting the electrical actuators once the system has been filled. Leave the actuators loose for now. Connecting the pipes and filling the system is the same as for the standard multi-loop system and multi-loop systems for conservatories. Make sure all valves to the pump are closed before pressure testing. With the system filled and pressure tested, you can remove the black plastic caps of the system valves and install the actuators. These will control the flow of heated water through the separate loops via the thermostats. The pump wiring centre and any thermostats must be connected by a qualified electrician in accordance with the relevant building regulations. Please refer to the instructions and wiring diagrams supplied with the relevant system. If you have any questions about the installing process, call our Technical Support Centre on 01268 567 019.